Okay, uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi, during the break when I got him online uh, here to be a guest, dropped a big bombshell on me. Uh, He has got it narrowed down to um, even who is needs to be looked at concerning this birth certificate. Uh, this is obviously bombshell stuff. Uh, we've got Bob Chapman coming up. Uh, Doc could even do an hour with us, but I, I don't want to keep short shrifting uh, Bob Chapman. But I definitely want to get Dr. Corsi back up next week uh, as well. But for those that just joined us, In the last three years, I've looked at the birth certificate thing. I found it curious that they spent over $2 million now blocking the release of the long form. They had Chris Matthews and others with talking points say there is no long form. It doesn't exist, that the receipt uh, was the long form. Uh, Then, responding to Dr. Corsi's book a month ago, uh, ahead of its publication, where is the birth certificate that I have here in my uh, hot little hand, Obama comes out, obviously, with the press conference. Uh, We have a new video out uh, breaking this down. Bombshell, new birth certificate, a forgery. Um, That's up at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and up on the Alex Jones channel. And uh, it basically encapsulates uh, the latest developments. But now I'm getting even more sure that they're running scared and that uh, the research of Dr. Corsi and others is spot on. Now, now, Dr. Corsi's been to Kenya. He's traveled all over Hawaii, you name it, really trying to get to the bottom of this. And just a year ago or six months ago, he wasn't sure. He just said clearly there's evidence of a cover-up, so we need to look at it. But, but, but now he's coming out and saying that he's sure it's a composite of other real birth certificates, uh, that he and now is getting hot on the trail of who he believes uh, – may know something about uh, where this newest birth certificate came from. We have the headline from yesterday, Birther Bombshell Corsi to release evidence proving Obama certificate a fraud composite. But uh, then two days ago, we see Esquire come out and run a headline breaking in their politics section, not their humor section, Jerome Corsi's birther book pulled from shelves. Now, that's obviously done to create the perception it's discredited by the publisher. That, that 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 so people have runs on the bookstores and say I want my money back so they get scared and pull the book it, it is extreme economic espionage then five six hours after it's published they come out at the bottom and, and bury in a paragraph this was satire when clearly it was put out to damage them and uh, World Net Daily Books Dr Jerome Corsi Joseph Farah uh, this shows desperate. Desperate uh, concern by the White House and their surrogate, known surrogate Esquire. The same day, the White House said they're going to run on the birth certificate with coffee cups and T-shirts with a slogan, Made in America with Barack Obama on it, with a copy of the new fake birth certificate. Now, we've looked at it. We're going to go over why it's fake, how it's a composite, you know, the total proof, uh, and more. Uh, and, and the fact that they blinked, Dr. Corsi and others, smoked them out of their holes, and the president blinked. Uh, Dr. Corsi, this... This gets crazier and crazier by the minute. Thank you for joining us. Well, great to be with you, Alex. And I've never in my life seen the White House attack, attempt to suppress or censor a book as strong as mine. I mean, these now the Democratic National Party and the um, President's Re-Election Committee are sending out this newsletter, this letter, soliciting funds. They mention me by name in the first sentence and vilify the book. They even sent the letter to me, addressing me to, to give them funds. Of course, they sent them some money and got a mug. I mean, it's ridiculous. This type of attempt to suppress a book is counted as the First Amer- Amendment, and what it shows is that the information in this book, I've said this from the beginning, the White House, the Obama administration, they will not survive if the American people read what's in this book and understand it. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, let's start with the a recap of the old birth certificate they claimed was the original and no other long form existed. Then they flip-flop there. Uh, now we've uh, the uh, proof that this new one is a joke-level fraud. Joke-level fraud. And, you know, I want to make two points, Alex. First of all, if this new long-form birth certificate existed, um, why wasn't it released uh, three years ago?
years ago. Why don't we have this instead of the short form certificate of live birth? And Alex, I got a call about three weeks before it was released from one of my sources in Hawaii, and I was told that the new long form birth certificate had been forged. It had been slipped into the log book. We actually had somebody go into the log book and read it to us. I knew it said Kapiolani. I knew it said Dr. Sinclair. And I documented all that with Joseph Farah in an email. And I, I said, we better get out front and um, say that it's likely to be a forgery. But we all decided, hey, this is great. If the book smokes out Obama and, you know, they blink, they feel fear, uh, they have to respond to try to destroy the book, now we've got Barack Obama personally committed, coming to the press room saying, this is my birth certificate. This is like Nixon coming out and lying in the press conference and saying that, the, that he wasn't involved in the break-in. Precisely. Yeah. And, and now the White House is committed to this document. They can't say, oh, no, we meant the other birth certificate. If this document proves to be falsified, the Obama administration of necessity comes to an end because they tried to preserve the administration with a criminal fraud. All right, let me stop you for a moment. Uh, you mentioned the fact that why didn't they bring this out three years ago and say that no long form existed? Why did Abercrombie get into office, the new governor of Hawaii, and say, I'm going to go down there and release it, and then tell two newspapers, as you reported, but, but mainline papers there in Hawaii, that I looked for it and couldn't find it. This is, quote, going to be a problem in the upcoming election. And then magically, it does pop up, and you've got moles inside of there, because you've already been there snooping around, that told you, hey, guess what? Uh, Dr. Corsi, uh, it looks like I Dream of Jeannie you know, made it appear in there. Well, and, you know, I think the, the falsification occurred between the time when Abercrombie could not find any evidence of a long-form birth certificate, and we had that Michael Evans come out and say so, the celebrity reporter from Hollywood, saying he talked to Abercrombie, and Abercrombie could not find the long-form. That's when the forgers started to work seriously, knowing my book was coming out. And by the way, Donald Trump, I discount. I'm co completely convinced at this point Donald Trump was subterfuge that he, you know, I talked, he called me two or three times, got me to give him a copy of the book in advance. I'm convinced Donald Trump was, you know, through Mike Cohen, it seems to be 50-50 working with Obama. Uh, they were close to Schumer. So if Donald Trump says, let's beat the drums big, then you release the birth certificate. I'll say satisfies me. The press will go to sleep, and I'll get my new sixty million contract. Thank well, you I'll tell you the NBC. dead ringer. I'll, uh, yeah, he'll get his new sixty million NBC contract, which is GE, which is GE, which which got bailout money and and Rachel right. Maddow right. and all of them. But expanding, here's the dead ringer. The, the 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 two days after he's quote discredited by Obama, he goes into a cussing tirade. He's a very shrewd guy, meant to further plunge him in the numbers uh, and to further discredit. Right. And by the way, uh, I'm going to watch very carefully and see if Donald Trump pops up to build the casinos in Chicago. Now that Rahm Emanuel is there, another tall building in Chicago, I'll be there investigating the connections with the White House and what deals, wink, wink, went back how far. I don't trust it at all. Uh, you, don't, you don't trust a, a guy that owns a bunch of casinos? Everybody <laughs> no. knows those are the good guys. Look, I also want to show you, we found, I, have you focused on the the stamp of the Alvin Onaka stamp. I want just a quick, simple way to, to show people how comical this fraud is. You know, I, I showed that the stamp, state registrar stamp, has a misspelling in it. Instead of the record, it's TXE record. Now, nobody uses a stamp with a misspelling in it. And then if you blow up to about 800% and look at the signature, Alvin T. Onaka, in the A, there is a smiley face. Now, I assure you, I've looked, Alex, at hundreds of Alvin Onaka signatures and hundred stamps. None of them have a misspelling, T-X-E, and none of them have a smiley face in the A. But, sir, that's my next point, is that they took it and put it on this green paper. The APs put out two different versions that don't have the green hash paper. Uh, you've got uh, you know, the situation where it's clearly a computer copying a typewriter, but we already knew that and said that three weeks ago in our video with 700,000 uh, views on YouTube because you can blow up the pixelation of the typewriter print and the pixelation of the same letters is identical. 
that's impossible with a typewriter because every new strike is like a snowflake or a fingerprint because it's how hard you hit the key, how it strikes the ribbon, the position of the paper. There's little, when it's blown up, microscopic uh, uh, ink blobs around it. You can't have identical same letters. That is only done by a computer that's designed to have fonts that look like typewriters. Well, and, you know, when you, the administration will not show the original. 1961, there weren't any computers. Where is the original paper birth certificate, if it exists, submitted to forensic analysis? I was in Hawaii last week. I went to see it. No one in the Hawaii Department of Health would talk to me. I went over to Kapiolani Hospital. I said, okay, if Ann Dunham was here, I'd like to see the patient records for Ann Dunham. I've known for years they don't exist. Ann Dunham was never a patient in that hospital. The hospital threatened if I didn't vacate the premises, they would call the police. Now, if I were administrator of that hospital, I'd have a little shrine in the front celebrating that this was the birth hospital of the president instead of continuing the cover-up by refusing to answer any questions or providing to the public the corroborating evidence that Ann Dunham had been in that hospital to give birth to Barack Obama. Uh, let's look at the computer uh, manipulation uh, of the text. You right. had an article at World Net Daily about that. Yes, well, when you take a look at the text of this thing and you, and you blow it up, first of all, I mean, you can even start with the number on the upper right, the 10641, which, by the way, is an out-of-sequence number and impossible. When you blow it up and look at it, the one is clearly a JPEG, a photograph dropped in there, and the pixelization around the one shows the attempt to not repair it very well. So it's still obvious whoever did that did not understand how to repixelate. And it's clear that the one is a JPEG and the rest of the number is not. Now, 10641 is impossible to be Barack Obama's birth certificate number. Obama was registered on August 8th, and that, when he was registered on August 8th, the number was stamped with an old one of the increment by number counters, 10641. The, the Nordyke twins were born a day later in the hospital, August 5th. They were registered three days later, August 11th, and they were given numbers 10637 and 10638. It's impossible because that counter does not reverse. And three days earlier registered, Obama would have had to have a lower number, maybe by 20, from the Nordyke twin. So the number itself, going back to the short form, was fraudulently, was, they miscalculated, they got the wrong number, they were stuck with that number. So the number is also wrong in the long form birth certificate. And then there's not the proper stamp that all the others have. I mean, there's over there's 50... no seal. Uh, no seal. No seal. Uh, uh, then... Uh, Here's the $64 million question. Why did they put out such a clearly shoddy version? Not just the layers, because you do have some layering uh, in these different computer programs like Illustrator. But what the computer then witnesses is the computer sees the six, seven, eight, nine different layers. It sees the manipulation and then automatically sorts it. The, the, the biggest issue here, and, all, and, and what all the Photoshop people in my office and outside groups have pointed out, is that normally with a scan, you would have one gradient of pixelation. Instead, Correct. it is a cornucopia of different areas with high res over low res. I mean, this uh, I don't believe that they could be this shoddy is what I'm saying. Well, I think, you know, Alex, if you're the president and you want to forge your birth certificate, you can't put out a request for proposal and get the best guy in the country to come do the job. They were stuck with the guys who were close to them. And I'm pretty well on the trail of linking the characteristics of this document to someone who's going to have a lot of explaining to do. And I think that when you see what I'm about to point out next week, we're hot in the trail of somebody who may have had a hand in this. Now, now, Dr. Corsi, let me just stop you there, because you offered during the break, you said, I think I may break who this person is on your show. And I was like, uh, first, tell us some of the proof and, and, and take us on the trail close to the person of interest. I'm just going to give you the hint, because I want to, I've got to, I don't want to give it too far away, but there are characteristics in the uh, long-form birth certificate as it's released and in the work of another person where signature items were put into the certificate of live birth to identify the forger. And uh, the forger is someone who does not work in government. He works in the media and is close to the administration. 
and would have been within the circle of friends that may have been called on to do the um, forgery or participate in the forgery. So I'm going to point out the signature characteristics of the work of this person, the signature characteristics in the document itself, and we're going to ask the public to draw their own conclusions and the person to come forth and explain why those characteristics are there. So you've looked at this individual's signature, and then you've noticed that it appears... Well, the way they do their work and the way that the signatures are embedded in this document. You know, every forger, it's like, you know, a forger wants their Mona Lisa to hang in the uh, in, in an art gallery, in the Louvre, but they want down the road for some expert to, to notice a flaw or a signature element where you say, this is not the Mona Lisa, uh, this is done by so-and-so. So the forger wants to be identified. By the way, this, it, in using that analogy, the certificate of live birth uh, that the White House released is kind of like a Mona Lisa by numbers. It's that crude. And you also have discovered initials in the signature, correct? Well, yes, we have. A, we've we've looked. We've got initials. We've got the. Uh, I'm on the track of a person I think that was deeply involved when this was done, and I think we're going to be able to pin this down, not just that it's a forgery, but to look at the chain from which the forgery came from within the White House, and I should be able to have this evidence done next week. Also, Alex, I've been releasing, and I will continue to release next week. We can we can talk about even releasing it, some of it through you. Uh, the documents I've got from Kenya, which show that uh, the grandmother has been saying Obama was born there for years, the government, the intelligence services in Kenya have done a search since 2007 for Obama's birth records, and they conclude in government stationery the 1961 birth records in Kenya were criminally altered with an intent to destroy or otherwise disguise Obama birth records in Mombasa. I've got that in government stationery. Wow, that's breaking here right now. Right. And I've got the internal reports from the government. They identified Lady Grig Hospital, a division of what was essentially Mombasa General Hospital, where they focused their investigations and believed the baby was born. But the government of Kenya concluded, the intelligence service, that the family of Obama was trying to hide an important birth fact. They believed the grandmother that he was born in Kenya, they searched and they identified criminal tampering with the birth records, not random criminal tampering, but tampering so as to hide or destroy Obama birth records in Kenya. And you are going to produce proof from the government? I've got proof from Kenyan documents, and I can uh, work to get them to your producer. We're going to be publishing them in World Net Daily. Wow, when is that bombshell going to drop? I'll be happy to work with you on that starting Monday. Okay, uh, clearly, I, I, I mean, they've been covering up. They've been acting suspicious. We got the document the day they released it. We hoped it was real because, quite frankly, you know, I'm sick of this. I want to go against his record. But then... But, Alex, I want to say you have done such a great job with your videos. You've done such a... You know, World Net Daily has been leading this, but I'm going to reach out to the Alex Jones Show, and I'm going to share with you some material so that in your next videos, you've got some primary documents and primary work that we're producing at World Net Daily. I'm going to make a special effort on this one because you've so impressed me with the extent to which you've exposed this with your videos and your radio show. Well, thank you. I, then I need to give you then my video editor's email, and then perhaps we'll we can do even... all that offline. Let's get all that done offline, and we'll start getting things together next week. Absolutely. Now... Uh, the issue I was getting to is that where there's smoke, there's fire. The evidence of the cover-up, as, uh, as, as uh, criminologists will tell you, is generally evidence of the crime, the absconding, the evasion that's going on. To have Esquire, who I've noticed particularly with Obama, is their attack dog. I agree with that. Come out with this serious economic warfare, uh, vicious uh, espionage. I mean, that's what it is. An attempt to discredit, destroy, have a recall, uh, a uh, run to return the book. Uh, the same day they announced they're going to run on the birth certificate and that we're all a bunch of crazy kooks, this shows that they know this issue isn't going away, and they're scared. I mean, if they knew they're this scared. wasn't true, they would have just gone forward. Uh, so uh, well, break I've down. Got, look, I've got, Alex, in the book, I've got 125 exhibits, including the mother's passport records where she crosses off Obama's name to take him off her passport in Indonesia. 
indicates his Indonesian name, Soy Barca. The school records were in Indonesia. He's very Sartoro. The administration cannot tolerate if people read this book and see these exhibits. It destroys, <laughs> this is a, Barack Obama, if he was adopted in Indonesia, is no longer a natural born citizen. He's a dual citizen. Uh, all the research and evidence I show that Ann Dunham left Hawaii three weeks after the baby was born. I've got the college transcripts. I've got the courses she took, the university saying these were night courses, the apartment where she stayed, uh, the babysitter to interview. Ann Dunham did not return to Hawaii until after Barack Obama left. Barack Obama Sr. left. Barack Obama Sr. was never married to Ann Dunham. There was never a marriage ceremony, never a marriage license. They never lived together as man and woman. Ann Dunham had been messing around, spending time in Bill Letterer's bar on Hotel Street in Honolulu, got pregnant, decided she wanted Barack Obama Sr. to be the father. He wasn't real interested, except that it might help him with his immigration and naturalization status to extend his stay in the United States. Lend, he used, lent his name but didn't commit the ceremony. And Ann Dunham herself ran off to Africa without him in the attempt to convince the African family that she deserved to be their princess. It didn't work. When she got home, Barack Obama still did not want to be her husband, and so she packed up baby three weeks later, went off to Seattle, was at the University of Washington in Seattle. That's what happened. And so you're, what you're saying from your deep research and traveling all over the world, and you have all the proof here in the book, that, by the way, we sell at InfoWars.com on the online video bookstore shopping cart. Uh, you're saying that not, not only are they trying to cover up the fact that he was born in Kenya, but that he's a bastard. Yes, and that the whole circumstances told in Dreams for My Father is a fabrication. Mommy and Daddy never lived together in Honolulu. Abercrombie never saw this little family together. People at the university never visited with the, you know, Obama family and baby because mommy and baby, three weeks after the baby was born, are in Seattle and don't come back to Hawaii until after Barack Obama is gone. Barack Obama Sr. is gone. Uh, I've got all the, I've had eight or nine articles published in the newspapers. This was the first African student coming to the University of Hawaii. You'd think the local story would be, you know, African comes to the University of Hawaii, meets local girl, gets married, has baby. No. All, I've got all the addresses where Barack Obama Sr. lived. He lived as a bachelor. He had made no reference in any of the newspapers to having any child or wife in Hawaii. And well, it's they, now come out of U.S., um, what, what, just a few weeks ago, uh, big mainstream newspapers and magazines. I'll know you can source them. I just read them a few weeks ago that he got kicked out of the big U.S. university he was attending because they said it looks like he has multiple wives, women that aren't his wives. He's like a playboy. At Harvard, the, in the, uh, this is in the immigration and naturalization file, Barack Obama Sr. at Harvard, um, there was a Kenyan exchange student in Boston. Uh, Barack Obama got her pregnant, too, and, and he had to fly her to London to get an abortion. This is in the immigration and naturalization service file. Harvard and the INS concluded that his marriage to Ann Dunham was a sham marriage, just done in order to extend his stay in the United States. Say he had a wife and a child that he never married and never lived with. And Harvard decided just to cut off his money because they couldn't put a stop to his philandering. And by the way, this is all public. I mean, this it's is all public info. This comes out of the INS file that's been recently released. Well, by the way, his dad doesn't even look like him to me. I think with the story I've just told you about Bill Letterer's bar and Ann Dunham getting pregnant and deciding that, you know, her fairy dream would come true uh, if Barack Obama Sr. would just marry her, and then the child could be born and she could go off with him to wherever for graduate student return. He'd become president of Kenya and she'd become Mrs. President. That's what Ann Dunham had in her mind. That's what she told Maxine Bach. Uh, and that's yeah. why Obama, Barry Sotero, has always been obsessed with being president, because it was mommy's dream. To it be the was mommy's dream with, with daddy, who didn't participate. Daddy looked at this woman, and he said, look, I don't have any money. I'm, you know, I'm trying to get through. He entered. I got the whole record. He entered the University of Hawaii as a junior. I know where he first lived in the YMCA building. He had no money. He, very, he, he got 
on the Phi Beta Kappa list and the dean's list while he was there. Three years, he had a master's degree. He didn't want to live with this crazy white woman, Ann Dunham, who was determined to tell him, you're the father of my child, and I'll go to Africa to prove your family will accept me. Sure, so she doesn't even know. know. She, she didn't even know. Probably not. Uh, tell you what, stay there. This is, this is too important. Look, to be clear, I got to tell you, Dr. Corsi is always very careful about his claims. He's very meticulous. And just finishing the book uh, last week, I knew some of the information in here, but the exhibits, the documentation, and knowing this book was finished months ago, uh, so much of what he's now put in the book, it's as if they're trying to psychologically inoculate uh, with you know the Boston and uh, papers and New York papers coming out and going, yeah, here here's the uh, you know State Department documents, here's Harvard, you know, kicking the, uh, Barack Obama senior out uh, for all these wives and fake marriages. All of what's now come out is is vindicating what was already written in this book that was done months ago. And look, I've got detractors that lie about me all the time, and I don't even respond because it's it's a joke. The way they're acting, uh, his press conference, the body language, the fakeness of this new birth certificate, the fact that they said it never existed, uh, and that the and that the last one was real. The governor saying, "I went to look; it's not there." Uh, then it appearing. Uh, and now Corsi wouldn't come out and say he's hot on the trail and privately, you know, tell me they even basically know who forged it uh, if they didn't have uh, the meat and potatoes on this. Dr. Corsi, uh, getting back to this Esquire, I, I, I'm not a litigious person, but if I had spent millions of dollars to print up hundreds of thousands of books and the, and the 100,000 or so to fly you all over the world, and 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 page you. If I was Joseph Farah, I mean, this was uh, for those that don't know how the book publishing business works and things. Or, I mean, this was clearly designed. What Esquire did, saying it was discredited. Farah was recalling it. That was meant to cause a run on the book. People demanding money back. So, uh, people that are selling it in bookstores get scared and pull it off shelves. Correct. That's correct. The whole idea was trying to destroy the marketing. Get the book while it's just getting out there and tell people, you know, miss, it's misinformation. Classic misinformation campaign. Intelligence agents do it all the time. The book has been always on sale. It was never pulled. We wanted it to be called Where's the Birth Certificate? Because we were trying to induce Barack Obama to get so scared he'd release the document he released. I knew it had to be false. I know Barack Obama was not born in Hawaii. Papiolani does not have the records of his mother, and they can't, I don't think, fake them. By the way, the, the Kenyan security force, they wouldn't put you on house arrest when you went to Kenya right. if there wasn't something to hide. Well, you know, and, and I have the, the documents. We'll, I've begun to print them. I'm going to do a lot more next week, making it very clear the Kenyan government and the intelligence services did a deep search, a massive amount of searching going for Obama's birth records. They believe they were there. The grandmother's been saying for years, the grandmother may have told Obama when he first came to Africa, I was there when you were born. Why does Michelle Obama in multiple speeches, we can play right now for folks, uh, what, three, four years ago, give speeches saying we went back to Kenya, his, 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 his home country, his homeland? Well, I document in the book, Barack Obama, before he was running for president, was happy to say and have people write and print that he was born in Kenya. And I'm co quite confident psychologically, subconsciously, it comes out from Michelle because he was born in Kenya. And the family knows it. The Kenyan government knows it. They can't find the records because the records were criminally destroyed, but they found the pattern of destruction of birth records in Kenya that documents that Barack Obama's records were intentionally gotten rid of. And the Kenyan government says, they say there's 47 instances in specific of where birth records have been tampered, and they said this is a pattern to destroy Barack Obama's birth records and to alter the birth records around him so as to disguise the past. All right, we've got a few more minutes left with you on the other side. I've got a few other key questions. Any other points you've got to make that you think are central? Bob Chapman will also be in the wings, and he'll ask you a question before you leave us. Dr. Jerome Corsi is our guest. It's on sale everywhere. Where's the birth certificate? Number one New York Times bestseller, Jerome R. Corsi, Ph.D. They are very, very scared of this book. Uh, bottom line, I'm going to ask him on the other side, is this Obama's Nixon moment? Is this the beginning of a Watergate-type meltdown? Because there's no doubt they're running scared from this. 
The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Well, very exciting. Dr. Jerome Corsi is uh, going to be working with us, uh, putting out these uh, super viral YouTube news presentations as this news and information breaks. You just joined us last hour. They believe they know who the forger uh, is. Uh, the document itself is a manifest uh, unprofessional fraud at every level. They're just uh, basically knowing if they release it, once the mainstream dinosaur media commits to it, uh, they will then have a stake in not being discredited and will then always defend the lie. Uh, also, uh, he's uh, breaking here that early next week at worldnetdaily.com, WMD.com, uh, they will be releasing documents from the Kenyan government. That, that, that there has been criminal tampering uh, in the birth r records of the hospital where the evidence shows Barack uh, Obama was born. Dr. Corsi would not be going this far if he didn't have that information. Also, it's now been confirmed what's in the book written months and months and months ago um, uh, by major newspapers in the U.S. Uh, that the State Department was asked by Harvard to uh, take the visa, uh, the education visa, away from Barack Obama Sr. because he had all these other women pregnant and fake marriages. You can just look at Obama, folks. It's not his dad, but uh, clearly uh, the fact is they were probably not married. So you've got the bastard news uh, coming out. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. The point is, uh, you know, life's a good thing, period. It's just that they've got something to cover up here and that this is a uh, composite. Dr. Corsi, uh, uh, is this the beginning of... Uh, Barry Sotero, a.k.a. Barack Obama's Waterloo, because the info you've got in here with Indonesia and, and, and getting the dual citizenship, you know, federal law, he wouldn't be eligible on that. I think that's the smoking gun. Is this the beginning, and, and are they fleeing forward, and, and, and now that's why they're running on the birth certificate being real, this whole Made in America, this fundraising. Uh, d uh, after three years of ignoring this, is this their Waterloo? Yes, this is the beginning of the end. The Obama administration knows if the American people reads what's in this book, where's the birth certificate, and understands it, studies the exhibit, the Obama administration cannot survive. And the other thing, if people can understand, I wanted the title to be where's the birth certificate. Joseph Farris said, well, they could release the birth certificate. I said, if they do, it'll be fake, but that's what we want them to do, because then Obama will be committed, Obama will have to own that document, and the minute we can prove that that document is fraudulent, the Obama administration crashes. Why would they bet everything on such a fraud? The CIA, the State Department, they're masters at putting out near-perfect forgeries. It was the only thing they could think to do. They had to forge it within the group. They couldn't go outside the group. They picked the best. It wasn't that good. Uh, they were stuck with it. And they used the strategy. They decided they'd go with this strategy to try to preempt the book. Remember, they can't stand the publication of this book. Once the American people read where's the birth certificate, they've got enough information to know that Barack Obama is not eligible to be president. He's not even who he says he is. That's why all these documents are being hidden. And the administration can't stand that anybody will read it, so they say, let's, let's rush together, let's, let's put the birth certificate out. It's the only thing they had left to save themselves, that we can count on the mainstream media, they'll say the story's dead. All the while, I'm saying, okay, look, I'm going to take a hit. For a while, it's going to look like I'm not credible. But when we prove the birth certificate's a fraud, when we prove there's no patient records for Ann Dunham and Capulani, then the administration crashes, and they crash criminally. I suffer a little bit of a hit for a while where they make fun of me. In the end, the vindication with the truth is what I'm after. The truth is Barack Obama was not born in Hawaii. The proof is he's born in Kenya. The proof is he may not be who he says he is, may not even know or want to reveal his true birth circumstances. And he was a dual citizen, which independently disqualifies him at birth from his father, if that was his father, in Kenya, and in Indonesia from his stepfather when he became Barry Sotoro Soribaka. And you also dropped the bombshell that... Uh, Donald Trump has contacted you. He got an advanced copy oh, yeah. of the book. Donald, Donald Trump called me, pumped me for information, got us to send him an advanced copy of the book. You know, I had no assurance that that wasn't going right to the White House. Mike Cohen calling me, talking to me, 
They're talking to Charlie Schumer. They, look, the whole deal was a setup because with, Char, with, with Trump, immediately Obama says, look, you come and make the issue very big, get it on, then I'll release the birth certificate. You'll be a hero. You got the birth And then just drop the issue. Then the bin Laden, this whole thing. You can, you know, you can see the scripting. And if Trump were truly in this, and I told Trump, he called me up, I said, Trump, you get back into this and say that you want verification of these documents. You want to see the original best evidence, the original paper document, not this electronic nonsense, subjected to forensic te te testing. Get it out of the vault. If, we, if you're going to show the birth certificate, show the original. Get it forensically tested. And go to Capulani Hospital and say, show me Ann Dunham's patient record. Trump wouldn't do either one. And then we've got NBC that we know got massive from GE, bailout money. From GE, with GE, you know, virtually having an office in the White House. And uh, Trump breathing heavily about casinos going to be built in Chicago and maybe some tall building. I'm just waiting for, sh for Trump to show up with competing for those contracts. I'll be there investigating it. Well, you know, I, I don't, I didn't like, I don't like being played for a chump either. I gave Trump information trusting him, expecting him to stay in this battle and not to have me walk out on the plank while he sits at the boat, says, I got my $60 million from GE. I don't care about Obama's birth records anymore. Well, in closing, you see the – I want to go back to the SESCOR for folks that haven't read it. It was written clearly uh, you know, uh, as a news piece to try to, 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 to say that you guys had disavowed your own book. Right, which we did not. Uh, and, I, and, and I'm not a litigious person, but I think Farah has an absolute... Farah's going to... Today's WND top skyline headline, Farah says, help me to own Esquire. He's suing Esquire. Well, you have to, because... We will. This is a new level. I mean, just a month ago, we got the internal George Soros Media Matters documents where they said, we're going to destroy alternative conservative media. And Correct. you go there, I'm attacked almost every day. I'm seen as conservative, even though I'm just a constitutionalist right. and nonpartisan. I'm attacked every day. And, 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 and so we know we're on the list, and they say, we're going to infiltrate, we're going to destroy. And we're going to go use after the sponsors. We're going to use spies. They're, they said, targeting, they're targeting now companies like Orbit. They're saying, if you advertise with Fox, we're going to run a national campaign. This is blackmail. This this should be criminal, what Media Matters is doing, targeting out companies that fund Fox and saying, we'll destroy your business if you do that. That is that's a clear form. It's racketeering. It's racketeering. Yeah, but worse than that, in those memos that Politico got. It's extortion, too. It's also a form of extortion. Well, but yes, but in there they say we'll infiltrate into their companies right. with spies. Now, now that's espionage. Well, that's espionage. They're doing espionage, extortion. This is, you know, these are thug tactic, tactics capable of Chicago. And if that's what Soros wants to do, funding media matters, so be it. But I think it's criminal. I think it's a RICO violation. Well, there's infiltrating and getting your people hired into companies to, quote, destroy them. That's... It's absolutely beyond the pale what espion you know what what uh with what they tried to do you know with getting us with this magazine going out and saying the book had been pulled from the shelves well that's completely untrue you know you've got uh, esquire out there on the limb trying to destroy our market we spent the whole day people wanting well you know we shouldn't go buy the book it's gone all that misinformation classic misinformation techniques from intelligence agencies, and if that's what Esquire wants to do, then let them explain in court how they had an intention to destroy the book and what damages that causes. Well, it's bottom line, it's meant to cause people to run back to the store saying, I want my money back. Then all the big booksellers, Barnes and Nobles, panics and, and, and pulls it off shelves. And have you ever seen an attempt by the administration by someone in the White House to destroy a book in the history of book publishing? I don't remember any president going after a book like this. Uh, Nixon actually went after some authors and people, and you saw what happened to him. Th th this shows that they are running scared. They're in the last leg. This, they're gasping. They're desperate. They're using um, fraudulent methods. They're using have, have, you know, strong-arm tactics. And I'm just an author. They want to vilify me. If that's what they have to do to stay in the White House, so be it. I'll tolerate that for a while. The 
final analysis, if that document's fraudulent, then we're vindicated and the White House is going to have to explain to criminal court why a criminal yes. document was brought out. And the and Obama will have to explain to the American people All right. why he resorted to crime to stay in office. All right, we've only got about a minute and a half left, and we're coming back for the rest of the hour on economic news. Bob Chapman, formerly with uh, Intelligence, uh, U.S. government, uh, syndicated. Uh, I know Bob well, and I highly admire Bob. Let's bring Bob up just for a quick question, final question uh, for uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, listening to this, Bob, uh, do you have any questions or comments uh, for Dr. Corsi? Well, I love his work, and I, I am absolutely thrilled that he's done it. And I think there's a good chance he can take him down with it. And so everybody who's listening should be proud of Jerome Corsi. Well, I, also, I mean, I want to endorse Bob's newsletter. I've been reading it for years. It's the best, most insightful newsletter in the business. I rely on it. Well, there's no doubt, Dr. Corsi, you hit the barbed wire with this, and you're always a very careful person, and I've read the book. Uh, th there's definitely a cover-up going on here, and that itself in, 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 in law is a crime, uh, covering up uh, a crime. They're desperate. Something's going on, and they put out this shoddy fake. There's no doubt about that. And so uh, are they trying to cover up he's a bastard? Now, that's what Wayne Madsen uh, has said. Uh, and uh, I don't think it's necessarily that they care that he's a bastard. What they're covering up is that the mother desperate to find Obama and to induce him to be the father, took on her own a trip to Africa to try to convince the family she should be the princess. That's the story. Yeah, because he was in line to get into politics. And Barack Obama Sr. couldn't care less, and the family couldn't care less. They took this crazy girl over to Mombasa Hospital and let her have her baby. They sent her home. That's her missing six months, and she goes to Seattle. All right, Dr. Corsi, thank you so much. Let me see Bob's here on the break. We're coming back with Bob Chapman on a host of issues straight ahead. Stay with us.